Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking at logical reasoning. Now, logical reasoning is the way philosophers and scientists argue in order to determine a specific conclusion from a number of facts or statements. Right. Logical reasoning tends to be done by following a set of premises which will lead you to a specific conclusion. For example, premise 1. P equals Q. Premise 2. I have P. So conclusion, I have Q. Yes, I see. How one shapes their premises determines if their argument is sound. A sound argument is one which all the premises are true and the argument is valid, i.e. the conclusion logically follows the premises. Give me an example. Okay, here's an example of a sound argument. Premise 1. London is in England. Premise 2. Tom is in London. So conclusion, Tom is in England. Now both the premises are true, and the argument logically follows, making it valid. Therefore, the argument as a whole is sound. Yes, I see. Now let's change this to show you an argument that is not sound. Premise 1. London is in Denmark. Premise 2. Holly is in London. So conclusion, Holly is in Denmark. Now, this argument is not sound. However, it is a valid argument. The conclusions logically follow the premises, i.e. if London was in Denmark and Holly was in London, then Holly would be in Denmark. However, the reason it is not sound is because the premises are not true, because as we know, London is not in Denmark. Yes, I understand. Now I will show you an argument that is not sound, but not because the premises are not true. The premises will be true, but the argument will not be valid the conclusion will not follow the premises. Consider this. Premise 1. Fred is human. Premise 2. Humans are in London. So conclusion, Fred is in London. What can you see wrong with this? Well, here we can see the premises are in fact true. Fred is a human and there are humans in London. Even though the conclusion is true because Fred is in London, the argument is still not sound because it is not valid. The conclusion did not follow the premises. Just because some humans are in London does not mean all humans are in London and therefore does not mean Fred has to be in London. Exactly. Just because Fred is a human does not mean he must be in London as there are billions of humans all around the world. So even though the premises and the conclusion is true, the argument is still not sound. Very interesting. Moving on. There are three main types of logical reasoning which we're going to run through. The first one we will look at is deductive reasoning. Are you familiar with this? Yes. Deductive reasoning, or a deductive argument, is an argument that is intended to be completely true and certain. That is, if the premises are true, your reasoning will lead you to a logically certain conclusion. Correct. So to give an example of deductive reasoning. Premise 1. All men are mortal. Premise 2. I am a man. Conclusion. I am mortal. Or another one. Premise 1. All humans have brains. Premise 2. I am human. So conclusion. I have a brain. Yes, in each of these, if the premises are true, the conclusion is certain. Exactly. Now then, this differs from the next method of logical reasoning, and that is inductive reasoning. With inductive reasoning, the argument's conclusion is highly probable if the premises are true. So instead of being absolutely certain, like deductive reasoning, with inductive reasoning, the argument is meant to establish a high probability of the conclusion. So with the evidence we have, it would seem highly unlikely that the conclusion would be false. Right, so can you give us an example of this? Premise 1. For the past 10 years, every time I've walked past the neighbor's dog, it has not bitten me. Premise 2. I will be walking past the neighbor's dog today. So conclusion, the neighbor's dog will not be biting me today. I see. Or another example would be. Premise 1. All known living organisms need water to survive. Premise 2. Every time we have found a new living organism, it needs water to survive. So conclusion. 
If we found a new living organism, it would need water to survive. So as we can see, in the last two examples, the conclusions are highly probable, but they are not logically certain, so this would be an inductive argument. Right, so what is the third method of logical reasoning? The third method is known as abductive reasoning. This is similar to inductive reasoning in the sense that it does not lead to a logically certain conclusion. However, with abductive reasoning, the conclusion is even less probable than inductive reasoning. In fact, with abductive reasoning, you are making an inference. It's almost as though you are guessing based on the evidence you have and the observations you have made. You create a theory where the simplest and most likely conclusion will follow. OK, could you give an example of this? OK. Premise 1. Fred has been stabbed. Premise 2. A knife matching the stab wound has been found with Tom's fingerprints on it. Conclusion. Tom stabbed Fred. Right, so although not certain, but based on the observations we have found, it's the most likely conclusion. Unlike inductive reasoning, the conclusions are not highly probable. Yes, it does seem like Tom stabbed Fred based on the evidence, but then again there could be a hundred different reasons why Tom's fingerprints are on the knife that does not necessarily mean he stabbed Fred. Yes, I understand. Abductive knowledge is very common amongst scientists who come up with theories and hypotheses based on the evidence they have and what they can observe. Very true. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe and we hope this video helps you formulate your own logically sound arguments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and help us grow this channel. Take care until next time.